We'll start from the beginning. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-Mursaleen wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa ala min tabi'ahu da'ahum ila yawmidin. After praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and passing salutation upon his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we would like to go ahead with some of the rules regarding the month of Ramadan as an introduction, inshallah, when we go to our book. First of all, the month of Ramadan is a month that everybody prepares himself to make sure that he will grab as much as possible from the hasanat because it's a gate to paradise. And Abu Umam al-Bahiri, when he asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, about an act that would make him to enter paradise, he said, Alayka bisawm, hold on to fasting. For verily you can't find anything which is suitable or something which is similar to it in terms of reward acts, in terms of as well virtues. So the month of Ramadan is the month of Rahmah. The month where we don't say like some of the people, they say the beginning of it is mercy and the middle of it is forgiveness and the end of it is setting free from the hellfire. But actually there is in the hadith which is sahih, authentic, and the first one that quoted is not authentic. That is, there will be people whom Allah will set free from the hellfire every night. So in every night of Ramadan, there will be people whom Allah will set free from the hellfire. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to clear us up among those people. May Allah make us from those people who are utaqa and naam. And in order to, get, to gain that probability of being a person who has been picked to be set free from the hellfire. That means you're going to go to paradise. I need to make sure that that I will address Ramadan in the way that Allah Azza wa wants me to, and in the way that the Prophet Sallallahu and his companions have uh, lived the month of Ramadan. <coughs> so, there are two things that the people straight away when they come to the Ramadan in their mind. One, which is straightforward to the people who are lay people, I mean the, the ones who are laymen, the ones who are <coughs> general, <coughs> and there's another one which only the students will not even talk about. First one, which is the materialistic <coughs> breakers of the fast. <coughs> people are keen to make sure that they abstain from <coughs> food and drink from morning, from the dome, <coughs> until sunset. And that is good, mashallah. And they will learn the fiqh regarding this issue. But the other type of records of the fast is where <coughs> the students of knowledge talk about. That is, the spiritual breakers. And the spiritual breakers <coughs> is that the person cannot compensate for that. He would lose the reward that he's trying to get. And his fast will turn into just strike of hunger, or hunger strike, or thirsty, or water strike. That means you don't really get anything except for being hungry or being thirsty. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, لَيْسَ الصِّيَامُ مِنَ الْجُوعِ وَالْعَطَشِ Verily, fasting is not merely abstaining from food and drink. إِنَّمَ الصِّيَامُ مِنَ اللَّهُ وَالْرَطَفِ For verily, <coughs> the proper siyam is from the lab and the rafath. al lab or rafath meaning that the indecent or the indecent speech, the the ones that gets you to the hellfire, also anything to do with indecent acts, to do with fornication, or riyadah billah, all of that, and also the pras, where the Prophet he said, If someone had to fight you or insult you, and say, I'm fasting. Now say, I'm fasting because of, <coughs> this is a reply to the person who had insulted you. To say to him, I'm capable of insulting you, man, but because I'm fasting, I don't want to do that. It's a right that Allah had guaranteed for me, which is to insult you back, but I don't want to. I want to gain the reward, because this is the month, the month of patience. And when you have patience, you get reward in abundance. So, this month is the month that you say to the person, not if he strikes you on one side of the cheek, you say to him, go on strike him on the other side of the cheek. That's cowardice. No. We say to him, I'm silent. In the sign, I'm capable of replying what you have given me, inch for inch, punch for punch. But, because I'm fasting, I want to gain the reward of being fasting, plus the reward of being patient. 
use that as a da'wah for the people whom you have met in the street when they insult you, the ones who are non-Muslims. Tell them, you know, we are in the month of Ramadan and for us, Allah <coughs> had promised us a mighty reward <coughs> if we be patient. So I'm not going to reply back. And if you want to know about Ramadan, please come forward. Yeah. The person expected from you to go and insult him back. And you, go, you don't insult him back, that's a da'wah in itself. But the <coughs> spiritual breakers, Prophet he said, "Man lam yad'a qawla zur wa al-'amala bi, fa laysa lillahi hadithun fi an yad'a ta'amahu wa shara." He who does not abandon the falsehood and acting upon falsehood, lying, slandering, backbiting, then there is no need for Allah. There is no need for Allah. Allah does not need for you to go on fast and abstain from food and drink. Why should you? And as I said, you will be just striking, you will be not eating or drinking, but yet in nothing except for a sin. What's the point? The people are keen to make sure that there is no drink or food goes into their stomach from dawn to sunset. Why don't they do the same thing to make sure nothing come out of that mouth of theirs or come out of their hands or their feet or whatever is in between their feet, something that would excuse Allah's And these people, they're keen to make sure that they don't really drink water and they be upset. How much they're upset on somebody that is drinking water and it's fasting. If you about how much you have to be upset when you see somebody that is insulting. And the same saying is foul language. Are you concerned the same? You're concerned it's not the same. Come on, come to it. Come to translate it. It's not the same. People do not really deal with the same thing. But this is more dangerous, as I said. So, Jazakumullah khairan for making sure that there's nothing goes into your stomach from the morning, dawn to the sunset. But make sure as well the spiritual breakers to be there. Into your, in front of you with yourself, I'm not going to indulge into something that's going to scratch my fast. What's the point of me fasting? <coughs> Those breakers of the fast which are materialistic, we're going to discuss them inshallah at the beginning of Wednesday class. So for those who are coming as well to this class, come to Wednesday, we're going to discuss as well the breakers of the fast <coughs> which are <coughs> materialistic. Sorry about the cough, it's literally really worse today. Right, let's just go <clears throat> to the beginning of the book, Alhamdulillah. Now, Asl Saf, Sifat Salat al Nabi the description of the prayer of the Prophet of Allah, from the Takmeel to the Taslim, just like you are seeing it, and now we're going to talk about it. First thing, that is Istiqbal al Ka'ba. Today is our sixth lesson on this book, 16th of Sha'ban, 1437, 23rd May, 2016. The Prophet ﷺ's prayer described peace and mercy of Allah be upon him from beginning to the end as though you were watching it. Pray as you have seen me praying, hadith transmitted by Al-Bukhari. Facing the Kaaba. When the Messenger of Allah وسلم, stood for prayer, he would face the Kaaba in both obligatory and voluntary prayers, and he وسلم, ordered that, saying to the one who prayed badly, When you stand for prayer, perform ablution perfectly, then face the Qibla and say Takbir. Right. <clears throat> Istiqbal al Kaaba, it is a pillar in the prayer. What is a pillar in the prayer means? The pillar is an act which is belongs to the prayer if the person forgot it, if the person deliberately did not do it, or even unintentionally he forgot it, then his prayer will be invalid. So if the person prayed towards other than the other than the kingdom, and he thought this is the Darash of the Qibla. He did not strive to know where it is the Darash. He thought this is not something that happened to his brain. He usually thought, you know, pray to this to this Darash of the Qibla, but this day to pray that Darash. Then after he finished the prayer, he realized, oh, what am I doing? My Qibla is here. He had to repeat what? He has to repeat the prayer. 
It is different from where the person he is in the middle of somewhere where he can't find the Qibla direction. So, he asks, he makes an investigation, and they told him the Qibla is this way. So he prayed. After he finished the prayer, he realized that he was doing it wrongly. It was not this direction. It was this direction. Then, in this case, there is no repetition of the prayer. Because this person had investigated. And the proof is going to come in Shabbat in a minute. Were the companions, <coughs> where they were praying during the, top, the night when they were on the journey, each person he drew a line in front of him to make uh, sure which, which direction he's going to be facing. So each person he prayed his prayer, and they found out later on the following day that each person would pray in different direction. None of them had repeated the prayer. So they, they investigated, they strived, made an effort. To uh, arrive at the conclusion, but the prayer was well, not to the direction of the Kaaba. The Kaaba story that the Prophet sent them, when the prayer started, it was a prayer towards Jerusalem, Beit al <laughs> But the Prophet them, wanted to set aside the personality of the Muslim in terms of the way it, which is the Adam, so he didn't like for a bell, nor he lacked for the conch, which is the, you know, the, the home for the Jews. And that's why the Adam came. And also at the same time, he was not, he was reluctant to pray towards the prayer where the other nations, Christian and Jews, are praying to. <coughs> Until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the verse, which is in Surah Al-Baqarah, what Allah Azza wa Jal had told the believers now, to face the Qibla, which we're going to be discussing in a minute, inshallah. Inshallah, we're going to discuss that in the footnotes as we're going to discuss it with the, with the uh, uh, recitation of the book. So the Kaaba was then, after that, the direction of the prayer, before it was Jerusalem. Now, some people think that I could really offer a prayer towards Jerusalem as the time it was at the beginning. That's not allowed. Some people travel to Saudi Arabia, they go to a place called Masjid Zil Qiblatayn. The Masjid has got two Qibla. That's nothing to do with the Sunnah of the Prophet. And that Masjid, it doesn't trace itself to the Prophet. They say it as a spot where the companions to pray to Jerusalem. And the command came to them while they were in the Quba to pray and face towards the Kaaba. Whether this is correct or not correct, but we know that we cannot pray now towards what? Jerusalem. So if a person just tried to pray to Raqqa, I'll offer to Raqqa to Jerusalem and offer to Raqqa to you know Al Kaaba, that he has done something which is against what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded him to do, because now it is the Qibla, which is the Kaaba that we offer the prayer to towards. You know now that this is, was a synagogue. And their direction for the Qibla is the same direction of our what? Qibla. That's why the, the building is came to us, mashallah. That's why we pray towards the 90 degrees towards the wall. The reason behind this, because you're too far away from the Qibla. So the direction of Jerusalem and Qibla becomes what? Almost the same. But if you get closer and closer, even then the direction will be setting apart from each other. Do you understand that? Because the further away, the further you go, then the point will be so far that that point and this point will be the same direction. When you get closer to it, then you'll find, for example, when you go to the Kaaba. If you go to the Kaaba, if you go further away from the Kaaba, any tilt in the direction, it will take you different direction from the Kaaba. But if you go so close, even to the wall, you could really turn all the way like this and this, and the Kaaba is what? Still in front of you. So that is why this is the direction of both. Now from here, Jerusalem, and also the Kaaba. Now, let's just see what is the hadith that he has been quoted here. First of all, the Prophet of Allah, he said, whenever he goes up to the prayer, he will face the Kaaba, whether it is in the Fard and in the Nafil. So that's very interesting. You have to understand that. Meaning whether it's obligatory or voluntary. I'm not allowed. If I'm on the floor, 
to face other than the direction of the Qibla, the Kaaba, even in the what? In the voluntary prayer. We're going to discuss that when we go on top of the mount or in the car or the plane or something else. Now, I'm a person who's on the ground. It is not because I'm praying nafila, voluntary, I could really cut corners here, no Qibla, no Wudu. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. It has to be with those pillars. But those pillars can be as well taken away in some cases. Like for example, when we are on a mount. When we are on a mount, for example, let's say the, the camel. In the case of the camel, Prophet of Allah وسلم, he used to pray wherever the camel goes to. That is his nafila, his voluntary prayer. <coughs> But when it comes to the obligatory, he would dismount and he would face the Qibla and where? On the ground. Now, if, for example, there was mud, there was something he could not really uh, dismount the camel somehow, then you could pray your obligatory on top of the camel. Now, if the camel has a howdach, and you could stand up in the prayer, then the camel becomes like a what? A ground, because it's not moving, because it's parking. Okay, so the Prophet of Allah used to pray his voluntary on the camel, and the camel, wherever it goes, it is qibla, so it doesn't matter. But when it comes to the obligatory, it would dismount and would face the qibla and pray on the floor. This is the general case of the Prophet of Allah. But sometimes, as Imam Ahmad said, and Imam Abu Thawab had said, that the Prophet said, according to the hadith of Anas, that when he starts a voluntary prayer, he would face the Qibla first, and then he would let go to the camel to go wherever he goes. So, it is better if you are able to, in your voluntary prayer, to start what? With the Qibla. So if you are in a car, and you want to pray with voluntary, as long as you're not the driver. Can't drive your driver. Can't pray with your driver. So you are the driver and you are the passenger. You want to start to pray your voluntary prayer. Voluntary. Whether you're on journey or not journey, you want to pray This is a sunnah as well to be revived. So you could tell the brother, where's the direction of the Qibla? Oh, this way. <coughs> okay, tell me when your car moves that way. So he goes, move that way. You start Allahu Akbar, take the Haram, this is the Qibla, and then after that, it doesn't matter. It could go this way, that way, it goes the Arish, the other way, the Arish of the Qibla, it doesn't matter. So the start is to be what? Towards the Qibla. This is recommended, not but compulsory. It's not obligatory. Because it's a voluntary prayer. Now, in some cases, we're not able, even though obligatory, to face the Qibla. Like, for example, praying on board of the plane. We cannot come to the pilot, park your plane, please. We're, we're going to pray, you know, on the ground or on the on the runway. We can't do that. So, we first of all, we ask those who are in charge of the flight, please, still, am I allowed to go and pray standing up? If he said so, alhamdulillah. So you could go in the kitchen of those or whatever, they got their space there. And now you could, as well, what? Face the qibla if it's possible. Because the plane usually is not like the car. It's not really rotating like this and like that. It's just a steady direction. So you could know where the direction is. And there is now these days, this monitor shows you where the plane is heading. You will know where is the direction, basically, roughly. Now, it is not obligatory, but if you can't, you can't stand up. They don't allow it. Whatever, security system, you can't, and so on. Then you pray on your seat, and when you pray on your seat, it doesn't matter where you are heading because you can't pray face the Qibla. So you pray towards it. And if you could stand up while you are there in the seat, stand up, they're allowed. No problem, but it's even tight, you can't do that. But you could pray sitting down, make your rukur uh, with a gesture and your sujood, which is lower than that gesture. So this is the rukur and this is what? Sujood. So that's how we do it. Don't open the tray which is in front of you to make sujood on top of it. That's not right. Some people they do that, so you just say kukur, and the sujood is just lower than that, and you do the prayer because this is la yukallifu Allah nafsa illa wusah. So now you understand the 
a ticket of train on board of a plane because you're not allowed to stand up. If you're allowed to stand up, then stand up and go and tell them where's the Qibla direction and pray towards the direction of the Qibla, your obligatory prayer. Make sure that you combine the prayer. This is very good. And of course, you're going to shorten because you're going to be a traveler. So, two raka'a dhuhr, two raka'a asr, and also you make three raka'a maghrib and two raka'a isha, and of course the fajr on its own. So this is the prayer on board of the plane. <clears throat> now we're going to come to the hadith al-musi salata. That is the one who made a mistake in his prayer. This hadith is going to repeat itself so many times in the book. This hadith has been narrated from so many directions. And the Shaykh Rahimahullah, he had made us very happy when he had gathered the hadith from all over, all over that, those narrations and he put them, he put the addition. And the principle is that when the hadith, which is the same story, comes from different direction and each person brings something extra, as long as it's trustworthy, as long as it applies with the conditions of the hadith and there is no criticism of that, then it is supposed to be ziyad al thiqah makbulah, meaning the extra addition from somebody who's trustworthy is to be accepted. So this hadith compiles the compulsory acts that the person should do while he's praying. What is the story of this person? The story of this person is that he came to the Prophet of Salaam's masjid while the Prophet of Allah is watching. And he prayed. And when he prayed, he prayed fast. It had no tranquility in his rukur, no tranquility in his sujood. And the tranquility is a pillar. And as I said, the pillar, if you don't do it, then your prayer is well in bad. So, Prophet of Allah, upon him coming to him, he said, Salaamu Alaikum wa Ya Rasulullah, Salaamu Alaikum as -salam. Peace be upon you, go back, for you haven't prayed. So he just replied the salutation, and straight away told him, what he needs to know, which is enjoying good and forbidding evil. So if you saw somebody, said, Wa alaykum as brother, I think what you've done is a bid'ah. You should really thank that brother. Jazakallahu khair. Don't get mad. Why are you just the first thing is, Wa alaykum as bid'ah? Yes, yes, I'm really a mirror to you. Al mu'min, mir'at al mu'min. I'm a mirror, God show you. And the mirror reflects what truthfulness. The mirror does not give anything except for the truth. So if you do like this to the mirror, the mirror will do like this like to you as well. It will give you the same image. So it will reflect what you are. So the believer, he will be honest with you. Probably you've done something almost wrong. You have shot your back when you're praying, you have to repeat the prayer. That's the believer. But the one who is not a believer, he will say, I'll overlook as long as it's my group, in my jama'ah, in my partisan, I overlook. That's not right. That's, that's not good brother. That's not a sincere brotherhood. So, Prophet of Allah said to him, go back, we have a prayer. And the man has prayed again the same prayer. Did not change. Went back to the Prophet of Allah. Prophet of Allah said, go back, you haven't prayed. Third time, salam, you haven't prayed. Look how patient the Prophet of Allah. Prophet of Allah did not say to them second time, didn't I tell you you haven't prayed? He didn't tell them off. He said you haven't prayed. Go and pray. Come on, come up with something that you should have really done better. But the man, he was what? Ignorant. <coughs> He's not stubborn. He's ignorant. Because the stubborn means he will repeat, ah, I'll repeat it again. Well, the stubborn will not even pray. Well, why should I pray it again? He prayed it, but he thought, maybe I've done this, but he actually did not hit the nail, because he did not get that point where he began to stay. So the third time, patiently, came to the Prophet of Allah, said, Salaam. He wants to ask the Prophet of Allah, the Prophet of Allah said, before we ask each other, go and pray, we haven't prayed. So the Prophet of Allah is waiting for him to say what? Teach me. When you give up, then I will teach you. Teach me. So, last time said, Messenger of Allah, by the one who sent you the truth, I ain't got nothing except for this. I surrender now. So, it's, there's no point for me to go and pray, 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 pray. No. So, can you just teach me? So, now he had talked to him. So, where should we get the commands for this prayer? 
So he said to him, if you come to the prayer, فَأَسْبِرُ wudu. Wudu Wudu is a condition, prerequisite. No wudu, no salah. Okay? No wudu, no salah. <laughs> and there's a principle you should learn regarding forgetting a something which is required from you. And something which you do which is forbidden upon you. The principle says that if the person had forgotten something which he needs to do, then his act is still invalid. He's supposed to do. But if he's forgotten and he did something which is he's not supposed to do, then it's a let off. Do you understand that? So this person, he is supposed to what? He's supposed to what? To make wudu. And that, regardless, you forgot, or you did not forget, if you did not do that command, then you what? Your prayer will be invalid. Rukur, you forgot to do rukur, forgot to do raka'ah, your prayer will be what? Invalid. You forgot to do the fatiha, fatiha is a pillar, your prayer is invalid. But if you did something which is prohibited to do, that is when the person, he will be let off. As we can discuss, inshallah, in a minute. Coming to the hadith, which the brother had read, the doctor, إِذَا قُمْتَ إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ If you stand up for the prayer, make sure they make the wudu, then face the qibla. Now, there's a footnote there for number one, which says this is mutawatir, then number two, which is to do with this hadith of the Musi salat. Yes? Read for that, please, because it's important. It says, see, appendix three, which is at the back. <coughs> What's appendix? The footprint doesn't elaborate on it. This is the appendix three. Really? Three. Yeah. Go on. 101. Yeah. The one who prayed badly, radiallahu anhu. In Hadith, he's a, he's a companion. Yeah. In hadith and fiqh literature, this term refers to the companion mentioned in the following hadith of Sahih al-Bukhari, the book of prayer, English translation by Dr. Muhammad Naqsim Khan, and many other narrator, narrations of this incident are found in the various collections of hadith and provide an important source of instructions from the Prophet wasallam regarding the correct way to pray. Narrated Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam entered the mosque and a person followed him. The man prayed and then went to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and greeted him. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam returned the greeting and said to him, Go back and pray for you have not prayed. The man went back and prayed in the same way as before and then returned and greeted the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who said, Go back and pray for you have not prayed and three times. The man said, By him who sent you with the truth, I cannot do so any better than this, so please teach me. He وسلم, said, When you stand for the prayer, say takbir, and when you recite what is easy for you from the Quran, from what you know by heart, then bow uh, until you feel at ease in ruku. At ease means tranquility. No. Then raise your head and stand up straight. Then prostrate until you feel at ease in the sajda. Then sit with calmness until you feel at ease. And do likewise in all your prayers. Further narrations of this hadith found in the other words, uh, in the other works of hadith such as Sunan Abi Dawud, etc. contain further details. Now go back to the matter. During a journey, he وسلم, would pray voluntary prayers and with her on his mount, wherever it faced carrying him, east or west. The saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right, this is, and also he would make water. Does it say that? And also he would make water on it. Voluntary and with And with Right. Whether it goes east or west. East or west because of the direction of the Kaaba from Medina. Medina lies on the north of Mecca. <coughs> So remember, 
that east and west is not the direction of the Kaaba from Medina. Medina it lies to the north. So Kaaba lies to the what? To the south. So going east and west, that means to other than the direction of the what? The Kaaba. <coughs> Whereas, if you pray, for example, in India, if you face the west, you face in what? Him. And if you pray in Morocco, if you face the east, you'll be praying facing the what? <laughs> now, <clears throat> the Qibla, for the person who sees it, he has to hit it with his eye. Imagine he's got laser in his eyes. He has to be looking at the Qibla. But if he can't see the Qibla, and he hasn't got tools to know where the Qibla is, then he has to face only the jihad, the side of it. <coughs> so, if the person doesn't know the Qibla is exactly this way, so you could pray that way, this way, that way, even that way. Face the what? The jihad. What is the jihad? It means what? The side of it. Because he doesn't know what it is. But if he knows, especially if you've got compass. <coughs> this compass is so precise. These days, you would point where the Qibla is. So if you've got the compass, especially in your smartphone, <coughs> go no further. Except for your phone, mashallah, okay. give, give me the direction, especially with the GPS now locations. The satellite will give you the direction of the Qibla. Now, there's a Qibla finder in the internet. If you want to know where is your Qibla in the house, put that house of yours as a location into that Qibla finder, and you will find a line called on top of your house to show you where the Qibla is. You know exactly where it is. And I'm saying precisely, it's like you are hitting it with your eyes. So if you don't know the Qibla direction, then you face only what? The side of it. So you know that this is, oh, this is, I think, south. Uh, to south. Or this is southeast, yes. So it's not really precision. But if you, if you know, then I have to face the Qibla precisely. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَأَيْنَمَا تُوَلُّوا فَثَمَّ وَجْهُ اللَّهُ Translation of this verse <coughs> from Surah Baqarah, verse 115 in English language. Wherever you turn, there is the face of Allah, applies to this. Sometimes when he intended to pray non-obligatory prayers on his she-camel, he وسلم, would make it face the Qibla, say takbir, and pray towards wherever his mount turned its face. He وسلم, would make ruku and sajda on his mount by lowering his head, making the sajda lower than the ruku. When he وسلم, intended to pray obligatory prayers, he would dismount and face the Qibla. Right. Okay, now so we understand now that the Prophet وسلم, used to make the ruku and the sujood upon his mount by ima, ima gesture. So the ruku would be like this, the sujood would be low. That's the ruku and the sujood. It's not ruku like this and sujood like that. Just putting your hands like this, it's not right. So the imam is only with the head, and your hands is on top of your thighs, as we have learned it from our scholars. You make your rukur and your sujood lower than your rukur. Now, we do have footnotes, which I am going to myself translate, <clears throat> where it talks about the issue of the Prophet Now, hadith Amr, Ibn Rabi'ah radiallahu anhu, he said, I've seen the Prophet of Allah while he was on his rahila and he used to do his voluntary prayer and he used to make gesture with his head and he would face any direction that the mount of his, <coughs> the camel of his faces. <coughs> but he would not do that in the obligatory prayer. He would dismount. So, the Prophet of Allah, he would dismount straight away. Anas ibn Siri, he said, we have met Anas and when he came from Bilal al-Sham and, and he saw him praying upon the donkey and his face was on the left of the Qibla so I said to him you are facing Allah the direction of the Qibla he said I have seen the Prophet وسلم, done it and that's why I have done it and this is narrated by Sahih al-Bukhari and Muslim so we could see here that Alhamdulillah the fuqaha of the Ansar, of the countries, 
except for Ahmed and Abu Thawr, where they used to make it recommended, which is correct, to start the direction of the Qibla when you are doing voluntary, and then it doesn't matter, which is later on, according to Anas radiallahu anhu arda, which is a hadith as well, that the Shaykh rahmatullahi alayhi as well makes authentic. Also, that he used to make the witter, not just the voluntary. The reason we're saying he used to make the witter, because there is a narration from Abdullah ibn Umar that he himself, whenever he prays on his rahila and it comes to the witter time, he would dismount and pray his witter, and he used to claim that the Prophet of Allah used to do this, and this is authentic. But this does not have any proof to say that you have to pray the witter on the floor. Maybe he saw him doing this, but the Prophet of Allah does not specify just the witter to be prayed on the floor. He would sometimes pray the witter as well on top of his mouth. So this is to show that, yes, Prophet of Allah, sometimes he needs his witter on top of the camel. Sometimes he would do it on the floor, but it doesn't mean that you, if it comes to the witter, you have to treat it as the obligatory prayer. And also we have from the other ahadith from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam regarding this issue um, the Shaykh brings a lot of ahadith okay? and he says that Ibn Qayyim Rahimahullah talks about that we should not really make the ahadith conflict with one another and we, that is, so he says that we are with the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Salah came and the Mu'addim had been commanded to make the Adhan. And then he made the Iqamah. And the Prophet of Allah, he prayed on his Rahila, and we have prayed behind him. So it looks like this is obligatory. But the Shaykh Rahimahullah says, this hadith is not authentic. So still standing, that when the Prophet of Allah wants to pray the obligatory, we pray it where? On the ground. He would not pray it on the mount, unless there is a specific reason. For example, like you're praying on the ship for those days, you pray in the ship, the ship is small. You can't pray, for example, facing the Qibla, it's too tight, and you can't stand up because you might fall in the water. That was at the time. Uh, but now, alhamdulillah, the ship is very steady, and the train is very steady. You can pray in it, and no problem. So pray on the train, you're obligatory, unless you're being pushed. But you're supposed to dismount the train, or the train is what? Staying still. But if you can't, because the time is catching, no problem, you treat the train just like you treat the plane. Right, now coming to Salat al-Khawf. Go ahead. In prayer during severe fear, he وسلم, set the example for his ummah um, to pray on foot, standing on their feet, or mounted, facing the qubla, or not facing it. So in Salat al-Khawf, which is the fear prayer, meaning in the war, there's no uh, requirement uh, how to pray the prayer. It's according how fear, or what is the situation regarding the fear. This, the more severe is the fear, the more option you have in the prayer. So you could pray while you are walking, you could pray, you can direction, whatever you want, even in the obligatory, in the talking about the obligatory <coughs> prayer. You could even pray while you are standing and make ruku and sujood while you are standing because of the fear that the enemies he might kill you. So it depends upon how much you are in fear. So you could say rukbanan, mustaqbil al-qibla, ayra mustaqbiliha. It doesn't matter whether it's you are uh, on your feet or you are walking, or whether you are facing the qibla or not facing the qibla. That depends upon how much fear that you have. And we have a number of narrations regarding sort of fear and how the companions to pray, depending upon, as I said, the fear and where the enemy is located. For example, if the enemy is located on the other side of the Qibla, that means the opposite direction of the Qibla, then no way that the whole army will be praying towards the Qibla and giving an opportunity for the enemies to attack the Muslims, so they would divide the Muslims into two or more uh, in the prayer. One would pray with the Imam towards the Qibla and the other one would be totally on the opposite direction of the Qibla and yet they're praying Jama'ah together. But if it's too fearful and the enemy is so close, then maybe maybe no jama'ah will be praying individually. So it depends, as I said, on the situation. But it is uh, it's very good and important for the Islamic State to teach such a thing to their army to know what is a salat al khawf. Now, Prophet, go ahead. 
Um, and he, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, also said, when they, the armies, meet, then it, the prayer, is that be an indication with the head. Now you could have a similar situation if you are praying in the jungle, like say you're in desert, the Amazon jungle. You're fearing for a, a lion to come and get you, so you don't want to, you know, pray because you're scared to put your hand on the floor and something will jump on you. No problem. So you see a lion there. The prayer time is pushing. I can't really do anything. And I could pray well, while I'm looking at him. I'm watching. This is called the prayer of the fear. So here we have as well something that we have learned. Prophet Allah said, "If the enemies are really close, then it is takbir and ishara. No ruku and no sujood. Ishara, ruku and sujood, ruku and sujood. My eyes is locked and turned to him because I'm scared. So ishara to the ras, ruku and sujood, ruku and sujood. Okay, that is the ishara. And ishara to the ras. Right. So we don't read, but there's no ishara with the finger." Ruku or sujood. Some people say Salah al Usbah. There's no Salah called Salah al Usbah. Now, with the head. Right. And the head, as I said, will lower itself according to what, how much fear. If there's no enemy to do it, it could make Ruku, it could make sujood more. But if it's like this, it could just Ruku, sujood. Because I'm watching him. He might attack me. Now, Prophet Wasallam also used to say, what is between the east and the west is Qibla. Now this is for a person who cannot see the Qibla and he is in the side of Lak Medina. So he is in the north or the south of Mecca. Then east and west will be between the Qibla. So for example, Medina, as I said, is lies in the north and Mecca is in the south. So between east and west will be what? The Qibla. Do you understand that? So here, for England, between what and what <coughs> is your Qibla? I want, I, want, I, I want 180 degrees. Between and 180 degrees. Between what? What and what? I don't, 180 degrees, I said. Ah. South and east is 90 degrees. I want 180. Do you understand that? You're giving me 100. I want 180. Yes? It is too difficult, yeah. Uh, very good. Part between east and east, east and west. Do you understand? It's still between east and west, isn't it? Still, 360, 180, we'll take that as well. But if you want a more precise set, like you said. But between east and west, still, because I am roughly in the north, isn't it, of the Qibla. I am north of the Qibla. The ones are in Africa, they're going to be the other direction, between south and north. That's 180 degrees. The one in the uh, 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 Asian continents, like for example Pakistan and India, it will go up as well, north and south. Same thing. So the ones on the, for example, Australia, is going to be for them like between what? East and west. Got it? So this is the person who can't know the kingdom. So just to face the 180 degrees, this is the direction of the kingdom. This is the kingdom. It's this way, between east and west, or between north and between what? South. I have to know the direction. I could be, for example, between north, east, and he said, and south, west. No problem. If you know that, no problem. So as long as you know, this is the jihad. It has to be in this. So you pray. If you don't know what it is at all, um, then you could pray with the direction that you think is correct. I, I, I don't like to say this, but uh, we know for a fact that the direction of the Qibla is almost similar to the direction of the satellite on the house of the dish. Yeah? The dish is almost facing to it, but I don't like to say, oh, take the dada, it's not like dish, as a kibla. I mean, just that word, I feel like I'm comfortable with it. But as I said, if you are in doubt, just look at all the satellite dishes, where they're pointing. You are just lightly to the left of it. So see it and go left of it, that's the direction of the kibla. Exactly. Now. Jabir radiallahu anhu said, <clears throat> Once we were with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on an expedition, the sky was cloudy. So we tried to find the Qibla, but we differed. So each one of us prayed in a direction uh, different from each other, and, and each of us drew marks in front of him in order to mark our positions. In the morning, we looked at it and, it, and found that we had not prayed towards the Qibla. So we mentioned this to the Prophet ﷺ, but he did not order us to repeat the prayer and he said, 
your prayer was sufficient. So this is a prayer in Sariya. Means in a battle. There's extreme fear. They did not do the Jama'ah. Each one did the what? The Jama'ah. So each one prayed on what? On his own. Because each one is on watch for the enemies. <coughs> oh, they wanted to pray towards the Qibla. They couldn't know because the sun was obscured. It was blocked by the what? The clouds. Because from the sun, you will know where the Qibla. Roughly. You will know where the east, that's where the sun comes from. West, that's where the sun sets. So they will know. The qib- so the, the sun was not there. It's a cloudy day. And <clears throat> each one had strived, made his effort to arrive to the conclusion, where is the Qibla? So they drew a line and then they prayed. And then they found out that none of them is towards the Qibla. They were all over the direction. All over the direction. 360 degrees. So the Prophet of Allah did not command anyone to up to repeat the prayer. Which means you strive and you see your best. You did it, you did it. Alhamdulillah. So this is <clears throat> from the Prophet said to tell us, you've done your best, but you couldn't really find it. So that pillar is not required. Now, he وسلم, used to pray towards Bayt al Muqaddas. Muqaddas. Bayt al Muqaddas um, with the Kaaba in front of him before the verse. You could say uh, Bayt al Muqaddas, you could say that as well. Bayt al Muqaddas is a Bayt al Muqaddas, but al Bayt al Muqaddas is. Now, go ahead. Which is Jerusalem? Before the following verse was revealed. And that is that now the Allu wa wadhi ka fi sama, falan waliyanna ka qibla tan tabba. فَوَلِّي وَجْهَكَ شَطْرَ الْمَسْجِدِ الْحَرَامِ الْبَقَرَةِ 144 Translation of the meaning We see the turning of your faces to the heavens Now shall we turn you to a qibla that shall please you Turn then your faces in the direction of the sacred mosque When it was revealed He وسلم, faced the Kaaba there were people at Quba praying Fajr when someone came to them and said, Verily, the Messenger of Allah وسلم, has had some of the Quran revealed to him last night, and he has been ordered to face the Kaaba, verily, so face it. Their faces were towards Sham, so they turned around and their Imam turned around to face the Qibla along with them. Right. So here we learn from this incident, this hadith. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had revealed the ayah that is you must turn your face towards the qibla, Prophet of Allah straight away faced the qibla and he prayed his prayer. One person, he had conveyed what he had seen from the Prophet of Allah to some people who were in Quba. And Quba is a bit of, you know, miles, five, six miles away from the Medina. And he went there and the people, you know, uh, being informed by this person, while they were praying that the Qibla is being changed to the direction of what? The Kaaba. So they have to turn now almost 90 degrees. <coughs> and remember, it's not just a simple prayer. It's a Jama'ah with his men and his women. So what happened is actually the women had to move behind the men. So when the Imam turned, he's like almost turning to the direction of the woman. So the woman has to move well behind. And all of that while they were what? Pray. We learn from this a lot. Number one, that you can correct the person while he's praying. <coughs> so if the person is praying, you could really either talk to him or what? Push him. Show him with a you know, tilt him with your hand. Okay, this is the thing. And it's allowed for the person who is praying himself to listen to what is beneficial in the prayer. So if somebody told him, be watch out, there's a snake there. He can just say, I'm breathing khushur. Okay, so that khushur is not khushur. So he has to listen. Somebody's telling him there's a snake coming. So he has to open his eyes and make sure that they're going to be bitten by the snake. So those people were listening. Number three, look how companions to trust one companion. They didn't say, who is he going to tell us while we are praying? Something which is important. They were not like Hezbollah Tahrir. Bring us Tawatar, brother. 
17, 18 people, then we will believe you. This is to do with the Qibla. Straight away from one person, they have what? Straight away, tell to themselves. They didn't ask, bring mother more than one person because you are khabar wahad. Khabar ahad. <laughs> You're not mutawatar. Bring the mutawatar, they will believe. This is to do with the deen, with the, with, the, with, the, with the qibla, with the prayer. Yeah, they have to. This is one of the proofs that we use against those people who have brought this kalam philosophy bid'ah, which is that is the saying of one narrator or more, as long as they're not mutawatar, it's not accepted in the akhirah. Who said that? It's just their aql, intellect, nothing to do with the deen. Okay, uh, we learn from that that part of the prayer was to utter the darash al qibla, yet the prayer is what? Is valid. So they pray, they do not leave the prayer and start from the beginning. So this is what tells us a number of issues. For example, if you are undressed, somehow you didn't know about it, and you were part of the prayer, and you are in the prayer, you are in part of the prayer, you haven't covered your awrah, and somebody told you, or you realize, you just what? Cover it, and no problem about that. Okay, so you just cover it, straight away. So if a woman, she was praying, and somehow that she found out that her hair is showing from the back, she doesn't repeat the prayer. What she's praying, she did what? <coughs> cover it. A woman, she was praying with a hijab, and then there was a little child had pulled her hijab, it happens, and he runs away with it. She's allowed to go and take it from the child and put it back and continue the prayer, not to read, put it under the other. Right, we'll continue, inshallah, after. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafi mursaleen, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in, wa ala man tabi'a hudahum ila yawmi deen. I'll summarize what we have said regarding facing of the Qibla. We said, number one, if you are standing up for the prayer, then make sure that you face the Kaaba wherever you are, whether it is in the obligatory or you are in the voluntary. And it is one of the pillars of the prayer where the prayer is not going to be valid without it. And this facing of the Qibla would drop down and it would not be counted as a Rukun on those following people. Number one, the person who is in a fight in extreme fear, then there is no need to face the Qibla, whether it is a voluntary prayer or even a obligatory prayer. Also, the person who is capable, like for example, an ill person, or the person who is in a boat, cannot face the Qibla because of the space and in the car as well, you cannot face, or in the plane. And also, if you are in fear that maybe the time is going to come out, so you're going to face the direction that which you believe is correct. Also, the ones who are praying, the nafila, the voluntary prayer, the qibla direction, it is not being asked to be compulsory upon them, but we said it's recommended for you to start the prayer facing the qibla and then let the mount or let the car to go any direction it, uh, it goes to, it doesn't matter. But it's recommended to start with the al haram with facing the qibla. Also, we said that the person who sees the qibla, the Kaaba itself, he should face the Kaaba with his own eyes. And if he does not see it, and he hasn't got any compass or anything, then he has to just to face the what? The jihad, the side of it. And that's 180 degrees you have. If you have prayed to other than the Arash and the Qibla, like these companions, then we say that because of you know, clouds or anything like this, and you have made an investigation, and you found that the Qibla was not the right direction, then there is no repetition, as we have said. And if somebody had told you about the Arash and the Qibla while you're praying, you should what? Turn towards the Qibla, just like those companions had done. And we're going to continue from there, inshallah. So stay, follow the point. Standing in prayer. Standing in prayer means the standing, which is the posture, Al Qiyam. Now, <clears throat> he, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, used to stand in prayer for both obligatory and voluntary prayers, carrying out the command of the exalted. So, the Prophet of Allah used to stand up in the prayer, whether it's obligatory or voluntary. It doesn't mean it's a pillar in the voluntary, but he used to stand up in the villa, the pillar, sorry, in the obligatory, and also used to stand up in the voluntary. <coughs> that means the sunnah prayer. 
Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He says, وَقُومُ لِلَّهِ قَانِتِينَ And stand up before Allah, قَانِتِينَ in submissiveness. Now, Surah Al-Baqarah verse number 238. And as for during a journey, he would pray voluntary prayers on his riding beast. He وسلم, set the example for his ummah to pray during severe fear on foot or while mounted, as has been mentioned. And this is the purpose of the saying of Allah. Translation of the meaning. Guard strictly your habit of prayers, especially the middle prayer, and stand before Allah devoutly. If you fear an enemy, then pray on foot or while riding. But when you are in security, celebrate Allah's praise in the manner He has taught you, which you did not know before. Surah Al-Baqarah verse 238 and 39. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prayed sitting during the illness of which he died. He also prayed sitting on another occasion before that when he was injured and people behind him prayed standing. So he indicated to them to sit. So they sat and prayed. When he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam finished, he said, You are going to do as the Persians and Romans do. Stand for their kings who sit. So do not do so, for the Imam is there to be followed. When he makes ruku, make ruku. When he rises, rise. And when he prays sitting, pray sitting, all of you. Right. right. In this narration that we have had, and then after that there will be the praying of the person who is ill, yes? Okay. In this narration we have, said, we have seen that the person, he has to pray standing up in the obligatory. Unless he's incapable, like for example, he is praying uh, and he is ill, or he is praying in a situation he can't stand up because of the fear, or because he's about to fall down because he's praying on a ship, he cannot stand up. There's no problem. But if he could stand up, then he must stand up for his obligatory prayer. As for his voluntary prayer, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to pray while he was standing up, but sometimes he would pray sitting down. And we have a number of orations for this issue. For Bali, the hadiths of the Prophet when he used to pray uh, his uh, witr prayer, he used to pray sometimes standing up, and when he reaches the last Thursday verses, he would sit down and then he continue praying sitting down while he's praying his witr. Sometimes he would do the opposite, meaning he would pray sitting down, and when it comes to the last few verses, he would stand up and he would continue praying standing up. So if he had prayed his sunnah, whereas the last thing before he made ruku was sitting, then he would continue up sitting. But it was the last thing before he made ruku was standing, then he would continue up standing. So the Prophet of Allah would not do the following in the voluntary, whereas that he would pray standing up. And when it comes to the rukur, then he would sit down. He would make rukur while he's what? Standing up. But he could divide the prayer into two. For example, he would start standing up, and then a few verses later, he would read a few verses standing up, and then he would continue sitting down. And then when he's sitting down, he would not stand up to make the rukur, but he would make the rukur while he is sitting down. And vice versa, which is, he started sitting down, and then just the last verses, he would stand up, continue standing up, and his rukua would be what? Standing up, he would not sit down and make a rukua. So in the voluntary prayer, Prophet ﷺ, he said, as we're going to see later on, that the prayer of the person standing up is double the prayer he is praying sitting down. If you pray sitting down, it would be half. So you are going to half. If you pray on your side, half of the half. It's a quarter. Your back, half of the half of the half. So, for the person who wants to pray sitting down while he's capable in the sunnah, like in the witr prayer, then he's capable of doing that and no harm, but he would get what? Half the person standing up. But if he was incapable physically to stand up or for any reason, which is legitimate, then he will get the full reward. So if he's ill, <coughs> can't stand up, then we will say to him, and then you're going to get the full reward. Now. From this, we're going to end up with, uh, before we open the question and answers, 
the prayer on the chair fiqh. <coughs> the prayer on the chair fiqh is important for those people who pray on the chair to learn this fiqh because just like when the person gets rich, he needs to learn the Akam of Zakat. So when the person is about to make Hajj, he needs to learn the fiqh of what? Fiqh of Hajj. When he wants to make Umrah, he needs to learn, to learn as well the fiqh of the Umrah. So if he is now coming to pray on the chair, then we will tell you to learn the fiqh of the chair. <coughs> and unfortunately, <coughs> we have lots of people, they do Hajj without learning the fiqh of the Hajj. Lots of people that do Umrah, they don't learn the fiqh of Umrah. Lots of people get rich, they don't learn the fiqh of Zakat. Lots of people start <coughs> selling and buying, but they don't learn how to sell and buy halal way and to avoid the haram. This chair, I call it fashion. I call it now, the prayer of the chair is the prayer of the fashion. It's the trend, basically. And I repeat this, because I've said it once, maybe before, I repeat this, you can say to the brothers, you have to be careful when you pray on the chair, that you are in need of the chair. <coughs> if you ask any person amongst us, he's old, and he witnessed the prayer a long time ago, he will tell you, we don't have these chairs, we never had these chairs. Chess was really something we've never seen. It. We used to be people playing on the floor, sitting on the floor. So now praying with a chair became a phenomenon. So that time nobody played the chair. If somebody was playing with a chair at that time, they would look at him strange. What one is this prayer? It's a new prayer for us. Now it's the opposite. Somebody playing on the floor, sitting on the floor, which is really odd. Never seen it before. So the sunnah became the odd. And the odd, which is the bid'ah, became what? The sunnah. <coughs> First of all, I would say to the people praying on the chair, may Allah cure you. I get you well, inshallah. I'm praying your feet. The one who is legitimately in need of a chair is the only, the following person. The one who could stand up for making qiyam, but he cannot sit not just make sujood, he cannot what? Sit on the floor. He is definitely in the chair. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He stands up in the prayer, but he cannot sit on the floor because of something wrong with his, you know, legs, he cannot stretch them properly. Okay? So he cannot sit on the floor. This is the person, we say to him, chair is 100% for you. Pray in the chair. But he's going to teach you some fiqh not to do with the chair. Now when he does that situation, a person who can stand up, and when he sits, he can only sit on the chair, he can't sit on the floor, he cannot prostrate. And we say to the brother, you know, when you stand up, don't stand up like these people stand up in front of the rope. But line up your feet with the what? With the rope. When you do so, that chair of yours is going to be behind. This is going to be the dilemma now for those people who pray what? Yeah, yeah. Behind. <coughs> if you learn the the chair, those people will never be hesitating to pray behind you. Look at all the time people avoid to pray beside the chair. They don't like the chair. You see the chair. They don't like it. Straight away, they don't like, they don't like to pray to pray behind it. And they feel sometimes annoyed with the people praying on the chair. Because I said some people pray on the chair, they don't need the chair. So that person, when he comes to the rukur, we say to him, make rukur standing. If you can't bend your back, just make what? A gesture with your head, like this. But don't sit to make rukur. Sami Allah, you have it still, you are still what? Standing up. Then we come to sujood, you sit on the chair. <coughs> so <coughs> when you sit on the chair, slight pull to the chair. It's not going to be the harmful. Just a slight pull from that with the chair. Then you will sit with your back and your buttocks is in parallel to the road. And that person behind will thank you so much. It's like Allah for not annoying me. I don't have to really pray, you know, crouch or for example, pray behind you, underneath your chair or, okay, you just a flat pull. Then you do your two sajda. Then after that, which is the sajda, you're going to be what? You're going to That's it. And then after that, the second laka. When you do the second laka, push the chair what? Behind. A bit. And you line up with your feet. 
This is a person who will play on the chess, he needs to learn this. He does this, will have no problem with playing on the chess. <coughs> ah, so this is the first case. Person who can stand up and he can't sit on the floor. He can't make such that. But there's a second case where he could stand up, but he could sit on the floor, but he can't make prostration. Do you understand that? He could stand up, but he could sit on the floor, but he can't make what? Prostration. In this case, we say to the person that if you could, no problem if you just stand up and to sit down, then sitting down on the floor is better than sitting on the chair. But you're not allowed to sit on the chair. Because you could sit on the floor. So you sit on the floor, that's not profitable Allah. You sit on the floor, make your <coughs> to such that, which is because you can't make them on the floor, okay? But, uh, uh, with uh, pointing, and then he comes up, you get up, you get up. So you sit on the floor, and you get up. It's better than sitting on the chair, but the chair is an option. No problem, but the better to sit on the floor. Now, when you sit on the floor, how do you sit on the floor? The best sitting is the way that you sit on the which is a tirash. If you can't, then tawarruk. If you can't, cross-legged. If you can't, even you could put your feet and ask the brother to stretch your feet like this. Okay, that like that. Stretch the palm fully. You could pray like that. No problem, pray like this. Stretch your feet towards the qibla. You're not going to cause any harm to anybody because it's in front of you. It's only going to cause harm when you are doing it behind you. That's the problem. So in front of you, stretch your feet and pray. So the first sitting is the, the sitting of the prayer, which is firash and tawarruq. Okay? Tawarruq, which is the same way you read the shah. If you come cross legged, okay? As long as you are relaxed and or you could press your feet, no, that's better than the chair. Right? Better than the chair. You stay onto the chair, okay? Learn how to pull it if you can, whenever. Now there is brothers who made Jazamullah Khaira in their masjid a chair which is I would say I'm not gonna say bid'ah hasana but helps which is a chair that it is all the time folded and when you sit on it it will open. So it's got two legs hooking onto the floor and those two legs they are not on the row, they are behind. So when the chair is empty, even a normal person, so it is like just two legs, two legs, two legs, two legs. And in those two legs there is a chair which can open like that. So if the person, there is nobody there who is ill, that chair will not cause any trouble. So the person could as well come and pray standing up in it, and make rukuwa, and comfortably, it will not block him. And it will not make a separation between the feet of his and the feet of the other brother. With the other chairs, you can't put the feet with the feet. You have to put chair with the chair, leg with the leg. So that's a very good chair. I have seen it, mashallah. And as I said, it does not break off the line. It's actually a continuous line. And the person, he just when he sits, that chair will open with him. He will just push it like this and he will open. When he stands up, the spring will take it back. Okay, and you will be lined up with the people, that's a good chair. Have I shown you the chair of the sajood? The chair with that chair. Okay. There's a chair which is now has been innovated. And this is the chair where for the people who want to make sujood. And as I said, you remember when we talked about the plane, you open the tray, which is not allowed, we said. So if you are making gesture on the chair, like this on sujood, don't ever bring a pillow. To pray on it, or you're sitting on the floor, bring your pillows to pray on top of it. Either you need to do it on the floor, or you make a gesture, but don't put something like high in order to make sujood, like the table in front of you and the aeroplane for that food. So, this chair, subhanAllah, I never thought that they would innovate something like this. They call it the sujood chair. Okay, the sujood chair. Let me just look at it here. Okay, that's the one. Everybody look at it. Whoa. You see the two it's the jute chair. Okay, it's a chair, it's in front of it like okay, can you see? It's amazing <laughs> how these people can elevate things. The Shiyukh said that this chair is not allowed. Okay? You have a fatwa from Shaykh Sahih Fuzan that, that chair 
it's not allowed. So he's sitting down and making sujood and what? On that thing which is in front of him. Right. Third case. Third case is a person who is not allowed to use the chair. He's the one who could make sujood. He can make sajda on the floor. Okay? Yes, he cannot stand up, but he can't sit on the chair. Because if he sat on the chair, he said, I can't stand up. Yes, brother, you can't stand up, sit on the floor. Because if you sat on the chair, you can't make what? Sujood. So if you sat on the chair and you are allowed, and you are able to make sajda on the floor, you have missed Rukun 1, pillar number 1, which is first sajda. Pillar number 2, second sajda. Pillar number 3, the sitting between the two sajda. All these pillars, you've missed them. Your prayer is invalid. Now how many people do you pray on the chair and they are able to prostrate on the floor? Plenty. So those are the ones we're going to tell them. Uncle, brother, you move the chair and what? Sit on the floor and pray on the floor. That's what you should do because you are making the prostration. So in this case, we say it's not allowed to, to use the, what? the chair. So, so we said now a person who could stand up but he can't sit on the floor, he can't make sujood, this one uses the chair 100%. Person could stand up, he could sit on the floor, but he can't make sujood, then he's got a choice, better to sit on the floor. Person, he can't stand up. Okay, he can't stand up. But he could make sujood, he's not allowed to use what? The chair at all. A person cannot stand up, cannot make sujood, but he could sit down on the floor. We said he could sit down on the floor because he can't stand up. He sits down on the floor and he can't stand up. And then on the floor, he could just make sujood whatever he can. Make sajda. Because he can't stand up, he could sit on the floor. Right. Now, after this, we say, why does the people use the chair when they are not in need of the chair? Why are the people they're not praying on the floor? There are reasons. Number one, he is ignorant. And this is the easiest of all. Ignorant. Number two, nobody's to teach him. There's no imam to remind about this issue. Number three, people follow one another. They see a chair, there will be plenty of chairs. Certainly. Number four, which is the, 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 the worst of all, the arrogance and the pride. There are a lot of stuff. And that's the worst. So when I kill that bid'ah, I'm going to kill that fashion. Well, very you have seen in masjid uh, on Sunday, well, yesterday, yesterday, Sunday, it's a new built masjid, yesterday in the official opening, uh, with the scissors, huh? <laughs> the official opening of that masjid, Allah Mustaan, okay? And it was the first lecture I made there, in that masjid, mashallah, it's a beautiful Bangani masjid. And Bangladesh, I don't know why they like the chairs. <laughs> so there were about six, seven chairs here, Second row, six, seven chairs, and that's like six, seven chairs in the first row, six, seven chairs. Yeah. But they use a the chair over the, over them. So I said, then when they made the prayer, I made this, uh, uh, a lecture upon this, but when they prayed, there was a row, some chairs were in the Sultan Maghrib, empty. Because there are not enough old people to fill them. And people, they don't dare to move them. They're scared. So it's going to pray upon the gym. I was not able to stand up. So they're going to be left like this, and so the chairs are taking the, okay, the front rows. They've got the priority of the front rows. They can't, nobody can move them. When I talked about this at the, at the matter, I said, those chairs should be folded. And only when they're needed, they'll be taken out. Alhamdulillah, they fold them up, all of them. So there were only two chairs in the front, I remember, and two chairs. Where they, 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 they all, so everybody sees an old person, please grab a chair for him and open it for him. But to make it like this, look at White Chapel. Go to White Chapel Masjid. White Chapel is a huge masjid. There are chairs there, more than 100. They're open on both sides. <laughs> most of them are heavy. Like what? They're empty. And they pray. Three on that chair, three on that chair. Between the chairs, they're empty. Like, what is it? A cinema? It's not a prayer. Do you understand me? It's like they're not connected to the roads. Two chairs there. People pray on the front, they pray on their own. It's not right. Well, they're in a cafeteria, or in a restaurant, it's a prayer. Because of those phenomena, this fashion. 
It's a fashion. We want to become the fashion. So we want an old people now to start having the guts to pray where? On the floor. People look at the first stage. And they want to become what? MashaAllah. Sunnah revival. But we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to cure them, inshaAllah. Do you have any questions? Go ahead. You've got only five minutes. Fadl. We haven't talked about the Takbirat al We're going to answer you, inshallah. We haven't reached it yet. We're only the posture yet. Inshallah, we'll come to the Takbirat al Yes, you have to read Takbirat al But we say now that Istiqbal al-Qibla is a pillar and also posture. Standing up is a pillar. We haven't started yet to the Takbirat al We're going to talk about it and what to do, how much you raise up the hand and what to do with the fingers. And don't worry about that. We don't have prayer, special prayer. Where you just stand up without Takbirat al-Ihram. I'm just saying standing up before Takbirat al-Ihram. So standing up before, istiqbal qibla, facing the qibla before. We haven't started yet, we're not in the prayer yet. We're just about to prepare. Now, nah. Zakhir Allah. Fadal. Does the ill person should really uh, try to, start to, to, to stand up? It depends upon how much ill he is. So if he's about ill but he's able, he's not going to be in pain when he stands up, but he needs help. If the row is intact, mashallah, then he could use the shoulder of his brother and the shoulder of his brother and he could stand up. He just needs a bit of help. Just like it happened at the time of the Prophet of Allah. He would be put between two. But now when you have an ikka land on your right, an ikka land on your left, this guy got to drop down. There's no shoulder to hold him. No shoulder to hold him. You understand me? You have shoulders, the shoulder, you will feel there's a bit of support. Then you will stand up. But if it's going to harm him, you should not stand. If it's going to harm him, or he's in fear, it will increase his uh, pain. No, we don't want that to have that happen. Now. Prerequisite and conditioning English means the same. Yeah, conditioning means it's not part of the act, but it's the same impact of the prayer. Because wudu is not part of the prayer. Part of the prayer starts with what? That is what? Now, you could fight while you are in the prayer, but if you needed to detach yourself from the prayer completely, you have no, no problem for that. So if you are in a prayer of the fear, <clears throat> And the enemy is attacking you. And you could pray while you are, for example, you're a sword. You're still praying or shooting. Allah, you're shooting, no problem. But if it's going to be too much now, I have to break off, then I'll break off. But you are allowed to do anything in there. You could walk and you are still praying. Because remember, you don't have time to offer. You can't just say, for example, after half an hour, after half an hour, there'll be another army coming to you. So that's why the prayer is being done to you with a concession. And you could pray only one rakah. So the four becomes one. It's not like the problem. So that was the second question. You don't have to make that salah or after the break. No, no, no. You don't have to. So it's one rakah. It becomes one rakah, one rakah. But you have to make wudu, of course. Also. And by the way, and by the way, we have said before that we have started the mother prayer, that if the person had his aura exposed and he found out and he's in a prayer, then he pulled it again. But if he found out later on after this prayer, he has to what? Repeat the prayer. Same thing with the wudu. Same thing with the wudu. So if the person, while he has prayed, he remembered, oh, I'm not a wudu. Okay? Now, you have an option to go and make wudu and continue the prayer. And that part that you have prayed at the beginning, even for that wudu, is accepted. Only when you finish the prayer and you realize you're not a wudu, then you have to what? Repeat the prayer. So if you are in the prayer, you may take it for Allah Akbar. You still, and you remember you were in a janama, like the Prophet of Allah happened. His wash is next to him because Aisha's room is inside the masjid. So it's just one door. He went, while he's in a prayer, he had the ghusl, came out, and the companion still waiting for him. And then he continued. So his takbirat al-ihram was made while he was what? In janama. But this is as long as you are what? Next to the place of wash, wudu. You're not going to go in a car. <laughs> <laughs> Put the ignition on and on and then the prayer and stuff. 
You have to minimize the talk, and you minimize the one facing the Qibla as much as you can, and you are in the prayer. Now, that little boy wanted. For example, if uncle is coming through the door, and you know he's going to take a chair, and you give him a chair, and he sits on it, and he prays on it, do you take like half of his sin or half of his problem? Half of his sins? <laughs> you mean half of a reward? You mean you're going to reward? You're going to be rewardable? Well, you said, even though he can do this to you. Oh, he can't do this to you. He can't. If you're going to be making the chair to him and you know that he is able to make sajda, you are actually helped in uh, jeopardizing his prayer. You should not do that. Okay? If you know that he could make sujood. But how do you know that he makes sujood? I'm not saying I know. Oh, if you're just making a, uh, something like, okay, imagine the question. Good. Now. Again, again, he's like, he could make sujood. But it's the sitting between the sujood. Between the sujood. So how, how is the chair going to help him? How, how is that chair? I want to understand from him. Exactly. An ankle injury. Yeah. If it's an ankle injury, he, can't, he, can't, he cannot sit on the floor. And he sits on the chair. Remember we said, but he could make sujood, is that we say. Okay. If he is not able to make the, between the two, this is another, another case which is really very rare. You could make sujood, but he cannot sit on the floor. Is that what you're saying? He cannot sit on the floor whatsoever. That's another case. He could, cannot sit on the floor because of the ankle injury. But he could make sujood, and we say to him, then do what you can, which is on the chair. No problem, inshallah. Because we don't really want to harm him. You cannot say to him to stay in the sujood all the way. Now. Nah. Father. If you are in the plane and sitting, I said to you, you have to go and ask. First of all, can I stand up? If I can stand up, then where is the khibla direction? If you said, no, you can't stand up. You have to sit down. Sit down, and I don't have any options. I can't, for example, you know, pray, <laughs> make my back towards the front seat and face the people who are in front, they can't do that. I have to go with the, with the people, with the passengers. So, I will pray. If I can stand up, if I can't, then I'll sit. Fattakullah <laughs> Mustafa. Now. You, you don't do like this, no. No, no, you don't do like this. You just make it, you know what? It's Ruku and Sujood. Okay, that's Ruku and that's Sujood. Now, you, you, are, you, are in, you are in the process of the prayer, but you are allowed to say uh, which is needed. But you're not allowed to say something which is not, you're not needed. For example, I need, uh, uh, for example, to go into the toilet, the door is locked. So you ask your wife, open the door for me. Okay, so you could go to the toilet. No problem, Now, Father. In of the Huh? Huh? What's this? Like what? Khawf. Khawf. Oh. We could be two jama'ah, but the best is to make it one jama'ah. If you can't, then make it two jama'ah. If you can't, then you could make it like a companion. Each one is one. On his own. Okay? Now. Chef, if it's raining outside a lot, is it, is it allowed to sit in the car and pray? Very good question. If it's raining a lot, Am I allowed to sit in the car and pray? Right? The scholars, they have allowed to pray on the rahila, on the mount, not standing up, because you can't stand up on top of the camel. Sitting down, because there is a, a, a very hardship to go down because of the mud, and, you know, like maybe flood or rain, whatever, then you are allowed to do that. If it's too much of the rain, that it will gonna cause you harm, you're allowed to pray in the church, in the, in the car, inshallah. No harm. Even if it's the literature. For the doctor, last question. So the brother was asking if for uh, your question, not his brother, your question. At the, at the end, what he mentioned that if a person had to break off the prayer uh, because of the fear in a situation, uh, he doesn't have to repeat the prayer, but he has to repeat the prayer because he broke off. Hmm? 
brother a person who is that what you asked me? You have to make up that statement. So the, where was the question again? Right. But I don't just say, ask your question, don't ask his question. Then this is a seed of knowledge. Ask your question, not his question. You see? It's your question, not his question. Now, nah. what was the question? The question was that it's a lack of hope. You're facing getting, you see getting attacked, and you pray to You still have to make that prayer. If I'm, I have. I have broken my prayer, that means my prayer is not finished, then I have to repeat that prayer. But if I have finished my prayer, regardless of the way I've done it, then it's no problem. So I could be talking in the prayer, fear, Allahu Akbar, Adu Allah, and still pray. No problem about that. Okay, so you are talking because you are reading the prayer. But if it's to do with something else, then I can't, I can't be that only praying. So, if the prayer needs to be to talk, no problem. If the prayer, but if I break it completely, I'm not going to finish it. There's no rukua, there's no sujood, there's nothing, no judge, there's no salutation, there's nothing in it. That's not a prayer. You have to repeat that prayer. So I say to you, either you're in a situation where you're in extreme fear, you could pray while you are locking your eyes onto the enemy and you're just doing like rukua and sujood, like this rukua and sujood. No problem. So nobody knows that you're praying, are you? When you're praying in the fear, and inshallah, when we make jihad, we'll give you more fiqh of the jihad. <laughs> <laughs> Can you give us an example of uh, the jungle? The jungle, yeah. When you go to Amazon, I'll tell you how to do that, inshallah. Subhanakallah, bihamdika, shalala, bihamdika, shalala, bihamdika, shalala.